Cities need to prepare for a changing climate. There are a lot of hazards today, and a lot of them are going to get worse in the future. By the 2050s, we expect many of the world's cities to increase in temperature by one to four degrees Celsius, two to seven degrees Fahrenheit or so. As that happens, we're going to see more frequent heat waves. We also expect to see more frequent coastal flooding events. Those are the times when human populations in cities are the most vulnerable, when we have those extreme events. The Urban Climate Change Research Network, UCCRN, is a group of researchers from cities all over the world who study climate change. Knowing the science behind climate change, knowing how it's going to impact your city, knowing how the temperature and precipitation is going to increase or decrease, or what sort of impacts your city will face, is important so that cities can further prepare. They can adapt their subway systems, their energy systems, prepare for the various health impacts that a heat wave could cause. So it's important to prepare in advance for climate change. What the network specifically attempts to do is to connect individual teams of researchers and stakeholders in cities with other researchers and other stakeholders in other cities to provide uh, shared knowledge and understanding about how to respond to climate change, uh, both adaptation and mitigation. Looking at uh, climate change globally over the last hundred years, with more engagement, uh, with more collaboration, using our networks, we can work better for the society. Usually people uh, learn from others and love to network with other people. And networking and learning from other cities always helps you avoid mistakes. It helps us to connect with the many researchers, colleagues working in the field and in a sense built some kind of coherent intellectual force to really have a handle on the subject. The ARC3 project is, is an attempt to bring together uh, a comprehensive assessment of uh, current knowledge, uh, emerging knowledge about how cities are responding to climate change, how they're at risk to climate change, what the key impacts are. Just like you have the IPCC at the country level, ARC3 is three C's, climate change for cities. The first one was published in 2011, but now a new group of about 100 authors from cities worldwide are writing chapters, they're busy writing their chapters right now on everything from urban heat island to environmental justice to urban energy and water systems, and to urban government, how city leaders and cities can be organized to best deal with climate change challenges. The most interesting stuff is at the case study level. Uh, there's certainly a lot of broad assessments that are ongoing, but what UCCRN attempts to do and why it's really unique, and through the ARC3 process, is to connect those case studies and to link that really rich knowledge happening at the local level and make that available across a wide set of cities. And I think that's the signature you know, contribution that this process is making. Those case studies can be replicated in our areas. Uh, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. If the wheel is there, you just go and do it. So it's very, very practical, very, very useful to us. We were inspired by the New York City panel on climate change and how uh, you can see the relationship between science and policy making at the city level and we replicated that at the municipality of Quito. New York City uh, has pioneered a lot of these adaptation strategies, whether it's green roofs, as we're sitting here today atop the Jacob Javits Center, which has the second largest green roof in the U.S. These are ways to reduce the heating associated with the urban heat island and capture rainwater so that we get less flooding of our streets and our sewers. Those are among the strategies that New York City has been considering and that can lead in other areas as well. Certainly with respect to climate change, um, New York, London, uh, Durban, a few other cities have really emerged as global leaders and they become touchstones for other cities to uh, understand and evaluate what might be some opportunities for them to uh, adapt and to mitigate climate change. So there's a lot of cross-city fertilization going on. I'm very excited and thrilled to see how much power and how much passion and how much desire to do the right thing is uh, 
meeting in this in this place. You know, we are all, we really want to do the right thing, and I'm I'm excited to see that. We have to prepare for the climate of tomorrow, not just tomorrow, but tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. That's why city leaders have to take climate change into account in all their planning.